Hi, I'm Robert Byrne from the Deutsches Herz Centrum in Munich. We're here at the biggest cardiology meeting in the world, the ESC 2011 this year, taking place in Paris, France. And I'm delighted to be joined by my good friend, Lawrence Raver from Bern. Lawrence, welcome. Thank you, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Good. Uh, Lawrence has just presented some uh, very nice data from the Bern Rotterdam group looking at a comparison of outcomes uh, in patients treated with the second ger generation Everolimus eluting stent as against those treated with first generation Sirolimus eluting and Paclitaxel eluting stents. Lawrence, maybe give us a little bit of background into your study and what exactly you looked at. Uh, sure. So, as we all know, the uh, use of the uh, first generation or early generation drug eluting stents eluting uh, Sirolimus and Paclitaxel were associated with an increased uh, rate of very late stent thrombosis. And whether this risk of uh, this increased risk of very late stent thrombosis actually uh, 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 continues with the use of uh, newer generation everolimus soluting mm. stent is largely unknown. We actually have data telling us that the use of everolimus eluting stent as compared to paclitaxel eluting stent uh, has shown superior outcomes. Conversely, the comparison with serolimus eluting stent yielded a similar result in terms of both safety and efficacy. Importantly, none of these studies uh, included very large uh, uh, patient population. Mm -hmm. Neither did they uh, investigate the unrestricted use of the drug eluting stent, which is of particular importance because uh, the uh, very late the problem of very late stent thrombosis only emerged in patients included into all comer uh, studies, patients with high mm. uh, uh, lesion risks mm. uh, and high uh, baseline risks. So, therefore, our aim was to extend uh, the previous uh, Bern Rotterdam cohort study where we reported an increased rate of very late stent thrombosis up to uh, three years as published in the Lancet uh, mm. with a, by including an additional cohort of uh, 4,300 patients treated with Everolimus eluting stent and co to compare so the objective then was to compare the incidence of very late uh, stent thrombosis throughout four years so in, 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 in summary this is now uh, the largest available cohort investigating the uh, very late stent thrombosis incidence in patients treated with the unrestricted use of everolimus soluting stent. Okay, so you've got three groups. You've got EES, you've got SES, and you've got PES. And you're looking particularly at the comparison of EES against SES and EES against uh, PES. Correct? Indeed, and okay. uh, the primary endpoint was uh, overall ARC definite stent thrombosis, and secondary endpoints uh, included uh, ARC definite very late stent thrombosis, and definite or probable stent thrombosis, and cardiac death or M. I. Okay. So what uh, what did you find then in relation to definite stent thrombosis, uh, very late definite stent thrombosis, the primary endpoint of your analysis? Well, uh, there was a significant reduction in the uh, risk of very late stent thrombosis with the uh, use uh, with the unrestricted use of everolimus soluting stent. So the events were. Uh, 2.4 with the paclitaxel eluting stent, 1.6% with uh, the serolimus eluting stent and as low as 0.6% with uh, the everolimus eluting stent resulting in a significant relative risk reduction of 67% when comparing everolimus versus serolimus and in a 76% relative risk reduction when comparing the use of uh, everolimus versus paclitaxel eluting stent. Okay. And those are very late stent thrombosis out to four years, is that right? Yes, so uh, th that's about very late stent thrombosis which is from uh, one year from 360 days up to uh, four years. Okay, so we all exactly. have figures in our head from the earlier Burn Rotterdam data which seem to show an ongoing uh, rate of very late stent thrombosis around about 0.6 percent annualized with uh, annualized with the first generation stents. What's the figure with science? So the figure is now uh, coming down to 1.2 percent per year which is actually exceedingly low and uh, yeah yeah 
So, uh, I mean, very nice, nice data. I think the advantage of such a report is really the unrestricted use and you enroll very large numbers of patients in this registry. Of course, uh, one of the limitations then of non-randomized comparison is that these patients are perhaps recruited at different time points. Maybe therapies change, uh, perhaps there's baseline differences across the groups. So two questions, what methods did you use to control for baseline differences across the groups and did you detect any differences, for example, in therapy like dual antiplatelet therapy? in the three groups. Yeah, sure, that's an important point. It's uh, uh, limited to a to registry data which have some uh, inherent uh, disadvantages. The large advantage, however, is that we uh, examine the, in, uh, the unlimited, the unrestricted use of these devices. Yeah. We controlled uh, using a ITPW analysis uh, and corrected for differences in baseline characteristics with Cox proportional hazards. Uh, models and with respect to the dual antiplatelet therapy um, we it is difficult to appreciate the differences because the uh, the rates uh, we have only data about the rates at different follow-up duration however if you compare mm. the rates they seem to be quite similar in all three groups okay so, I mean, I think if we look at the randomized trial data, we've got uh, COMPARE, we've got SPIRIT4, perhaps some of our own data from ISAR test 4 we're seeing very low rates with the everolimus eluting stent of uh, stent thrombosis, late stent thrombosis. You've confirmed this finding. We now have a new figure from the Bern Rotterdam group, 0.15%, 0.15% with the everolimus eluting stent. What is it about this stent? What mechanisms do we think underlie this reduction in stent thrombosis? Do you have any ideas? Well, certainly the principal difference uh, as compared to the early generation is a reduction in strut thickness which potentially has an impact on uh, the healing uh, and uh, certainly the polymer may play an important role although we don't have we don't have uh, data that is really uh, convincingly uh, showing us that mm -hmm. the polymer is responsible for this uh, this important uh, reduction in very late stent thrombosis but i think these are the two main uh, factors that playing uh, a role mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Uh, some excellent data. Like I said, we now have a new figure from the Bern Rotterdam group with the Everolimus eluting stent, uh, showing that the rate of very late stent thrombosis seems to be significantly lower, around about 0.15% per annum. Thanks for sharing that with us today, and thanks for coming here. Well, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you.